Hey, this is Professor Perez. Welcome to the International Student Algebra Competition. Now, for those of you that are new to the show, let me explain how this works. Our competitors are placed in a room with a proctor. The competitors are then asked to answer five questions. Once they have completed the questions, we take the results and display them on our virtual board. Then the competitors will come out and explain their approach to you. And the best part is you get to grade their approach. That's right, on a scale of zero to 10, zero being the lowest, 10 being the highest. Once we receive your scores, we will average them and display the results rounded to the nearest whole number on our board up here. Now, after we get to the fourth question, if there's a tie, we will go to the fifth question, which is the tiebreaker question. That's if we get that far. So, now if you'd like to participate, dial 555-PI. Anyway, let's get started. Let's bring out our first competitor, Helga. Please introduce yourself, Helga. Hello, my name is Helga Lederhosenmeister. I've been a student from Germany. Very nice. Now, we have some tough competition for Helga, and this guy's name is Charlie. Let's see what he's up to. Charlie, wake up! What are you doing over there? What? Take out your paper and your pencil. There's millions of people watching you. What? I hope your parents aren't out there. All right, well, since we gotta wake up Charlie, we'll give, him the, we'll give him the first question. Here we go, Charlie. There we go. Tell us what you thought this was. Five. What are you trying to give, Helga a heart attack over there? All right. Helga, tell us what you thought this was. Thank you, Professor. This is five factorial, which means five times four times three times two times one which equals 120. Quod erat demonstrandum. Very nice there, Helga. Of course, that's right. Well, you better get to work, Charlie. Okay, I'm afraid to see your score. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Let's see what Helga and Charlie's scores are. Here we go. A 10 yeah! for Helga. Very nice, a perfect score. Wow. Okay, let's see what Charlie got. Oh, my. Looks like you've got some catching up to do, Charlie. Okay, second question, here we go. Helga, you have the honor since you're in the lead. Here we have the sum of three and a negative five. Go ahead and explain your approach, Helga. Thank you, Professor. To add two integers with opposite signs, subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value. The result has the sign of the integer with the larger absolute value. Okay, let's go ahead. This is what Helga said. Please continue, Helga. For the sum of 3 and negative 5, we first look at the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Next, we look at the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5. Now, we subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger, which gives us 2. To find the sign of the sum of 3 and negative 5, we must look at our absolute values. Our larger absolute value comes from the integer negative 5. Therefore, our sum is equal to negative 2. Quod erat demonstrandum. Very nice there, Helga. Okay, Charlie, looks like you got your work cut out for you. Let's see what you got. I used a commutative property for addition that states that a plus b is the same as b plus a. Therefore, 3 plus negative 5 is the same as negative 5 plus 3. Now, let me have another line. And we're going to start at negative 5. And we're going to move to the right three times. It gives me negative 2. Therefore, 3 plus a negative 5 is negative 2. There you go. This one's for you, Olga. C'est cavo. Very nice there, Charlie. The answer is negative two. Okay, well, the scores are coming in now, and let's see what they average to. Here we go. Helga has a yeah! nine. So Helga has strong. Let's see if Charlie's coming up. He has yeah! a four. Good job, Charlie. Nice recovery. Okay, next question. Here we go. 
What number do you add to negative five to get eight? Helga, you still have the honors. Please explain your approach. Thank you, Professor. Let x represent the unknown number and set up an equation. What number x is added to negative five to get eight? We use the addition property of equality and add five to both sides of the equation. This leaves us with x on the left side and 13 on the right side. Quote, erat demonstrandum. Very nice there, Helga. Okay, Charlie, you're up. Time to shine. Give me my number line. Let me show you how it's done. To find the number you add to negative five to get to eight, we start at negative five, I want to get to this eight. So, start at negative five to get to zero is five units, and to get to eight is eight more units, and therefore five plus eight is 13. So, to get from negative five to eight is 13. Very nice there, Charlie. Nice approach there. Okay, let's get these scores in and let's see what's going on. Here we go. Helga has a eight. Yeah! Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's see if Charlie moves up. A six. Yeah! He's moving up. Okay. Here we go to our fourth question, our final question, unless there's a tie. Okay, Helga, you still have the honors. Here we go. Why does a negative times a positive equal a negative. Tell us what you thought about this question. Thank you, Professor. My multiline always said, when a bad thing happens to a good person, that's bad. Therefore, a negative times a positive is negative. So, negative two times three equals negative six. Quote, Erat demonstrandum. Very nice there, Haka. Okay. All right, Charlie, let's see your approach. I need a number line. And remember, two times three actually means a three twos being added together, which is two plus two plus two more gives me six. Uh -huh. Therefore, Negative two times three means negative two plus a negative two plus a negative two, which gives me negative six. And since we're adding negative numbers together, the answer is always gonna be negative when you take negative times a positive. Very nice there, Charlie, okay. Let's see what our voters thought. Helga, let's see if she hangs on there. An eight, yeah! wow, she's going on. Let's see if Charlie can move up and catch up to her. Let's see what happened. And eight, we have a tie here. Oh boy, that takes us to our fifth tiebreaker question. Here we go. Remember, this is a tough one here. So, here we go. Charlie, we'll let you go first on this one. And here's the question. Explain the reasoning behind this common arithmetic step. Four divided by one-third is the same as four times a three. Okay, Charlie, here we go. Oh no, we're out of time today, darn it. Oh well, you'll have to come back next time to see the result of this. Anyway, thank you to our competitors for today and for all you students out there, remember, say yes to homework and no to drugs. Anyway, we'll see you all again soon. Yeah.